Good evening, Free Enterprise. Are you ready to race? No? No? Okay. Well, good evening, everyone. I am the Blue Wizard. I am joined here in the booth with the awesome, amazing Flossie Fern. Flossie, how are you doing this evening? Doing really, really well, Blue Wizard. Happy to be here. Uh, I love, I just have to point out Moleboy's uh, naming structure here. I definitely approve of it. <laughs> uh, it's uh, very, very bouncy. Uh, we are going to be watching a very, um, I imagine, a very uh, entertaining stream here between uh, Tybalt2010 and Moleboy. Uh, for those of you who do not know, uh, these are two, I would probably say, like, well-vested in the community runners. Uh, Tybalt being a man of the people, the aka the gambler, and Wellboy just loving the speedrunning games. Yeah, both of these runners are great. I'm, I've been really excited about this matchup, and then I was extra excited to see that I got comms for it, so very, very happy to be here. Um, what do you think about the hero? Uh, the hero, I, I legit looked to my left and went, oh, hey, that's a pa- uh, wait, no, that's a porum. never mind. Yeah. We, but, we you know, do, I- Yeah, white mage uh, will be in the seed, at least. Yes, and, uh, you know, there was actually some, uh, some talk of it earlier that, uh, you know, about when porum learns her spells, and I think porum actually learns some of her spells uh, a bit more quickly than Rosa, which is actually going to be really nice, because even if you don't get uh, the Earth Crystal, you'll still be able to get that lovely, lovely spell, Exit. Yeah, that Exit spell is very, very important, especially, well, it's important throughout, but it's very important early on, so it's nice to have it in your pocket. Definitely. And uh, we are doing, this is the second to last day, I think, this week for Potion Party. Yeah, I believe so. Um, yeah, we've got a um, couple, I think one more race tonight, and we have a couple tomorrow as well, more than a couple, really. I was going to say, this weekend is uh, chock full of, of runs, uh, races, and all things galore. There's going to be so much going on. And, you know, case in point, we have, what's Twitch saying here? Twitch is saying that we have 73 people here. So, for those of you that, who don't know, this is the Evelyn Elixir League, the Potion Party flag set. Uh, you know, there's lots of, well, objectives. And the way we go because I'm blithering on. Let's go. <laughs> uh, we'll see what boss gives our hero Porum. So we've got, yeah, Porum and tell us a uh, <laughs> double early exit, at least. We know we're covered in that regard. <laughs> yep. And, uh, you know, yeah, definitely exit nice. Uh, so I, I wonder how quickly we'll see our runners going up ordeals to go ahead and get just that array of spells on Tella. Yeah, with uh, having Tello this early, Ordeals definitely feels a little more comfy than it might normally. Uh, that's a that's a check I, I don't always like doing in this in this particular flag set. Yeah, and as Chad's pointing out, there are actually on this uh, particular seat that's been rolled, there are four objectives behind Darkness. Yeah, that's true. So the Darkness Crystal is definitely going to be on everyone's radar. Yep, uh, although... While there are eight objectives on the screen, our runners only need to complete six. Uh, additionally, our runners do not need to go ahead and fight that big bad boss that we can't move around. They only just need to complete six objectives, and then the game is that. Yeah, that's true. It's a it's a very interesting flag set. Um, and yeah, you can see that uh, money is definitely very important. Um, so our runners are doing a lot of looting. Tybalt's going up and doing the Eblin uh, castle play. And it looks like Moleboy is headed over there too, so... Yep, uh, Moleboy going at the Baron, getting some quick kind of in the entrance right there uh, treasure because this, while this is tea money-ish, tea wild-ish money, I forget the exact flags, but all the treasure chests have money, at, but the money can be in upwards of tier see here tier uh seven i want to say because crystal swords cost two hundred fifteen thousand. you can get a chest that's 107. i don't know if i've ever personally gotten that one but yeah I, you can definitely see a lot of high dollar chests here in evelyn so you we'll see the runners a lot of times going straight here to get all the money they need for shopping 
Yep, and Evelyn definitely being one of the stronger plays to do, uh, not only for the higher amount of loot that you can pick up, but also to go ahead and pick up those traps uh, locations because, well, while we have K main on, we do have K trap, so eventually our runners will be finding their way to these trap chests to pick up hopefully some key items that will take the lead in this race. Yeah, everyone's uh, starting kit does come with three uh, Hourglass 2s, so technically they could take these fights right now, though it would be with this party quite a bit of uh, slow plinking, so I don't think we're going to see that. Um, You know, I, I, I don't know. I think that if... Because these traps in Evelyn do hit pretty hard, um, they would have to be very, very lucky on their dodge rolls to, that's true, to pull that, that off. That's very true. However, uh, there, even with the hourglass, Tella's recall can go ahead and maybe get that uh, off slot or that uh, chance to get weak or stone. I, I personally have never seen a Tella weak recall. Maybe, maybe in my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is uh, like personally, that is one of my favorite things to do with Tella is just run around and hit recall. Um, and uh, as Noob is pointing out, even Fatal, I have actually, you know, I've never seen a, a recall Fatal before. And now I have to play all the seeds to get it. Yeah, we got to do this. All right, and looks like uh, Moboy's up to about 128,000. And yes, chat, that is over 5,000 for all the uh, DBZ jokes mm -hmm. to be made. All right, so, let's see. Yeah, oh. with this party, um, <clears throat> a heroine robe and an Artemis bow would be pretty, pretty cool on that porn. So wouldn't be surprised if we saw some purchasing of those. You know, I, I will take your, your heroine robe and Artemis arrows and I'll raise you, raise you gear that is not even for a character in the party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although, the, uh, yeah, it, it's kind of weird. I, I've heard a lot of the, uh, the runners on the you know, various teams uh, always running into issues. Uh, they'll either find a bow, but no arrows. <clears throat> wow, excuse me. Uh, they'll either find a bow with no arrows or they'll find just like a terrible bow. Uh, or just arrows and no bow, but I'm over here and all the seats that I've run of this particular flag set, I've, I've had no issues in that department. Yeah, I, I found that sometimes um, I haven't been able to find like a specific elemental arrow that I really want, or mute arrows might be a little rare, but uh, yeah, I've, I've had some pretty good luck with the arty arty, so can't complain. Yep, and we see uh, Tybalt here going into Mist Cave, probably looking for that uh, D-Mist. I got about halfway there with the Lunars, but uh, these are not the dragons you were looking for. Uh, I just noticed Tybalt's naming scheme. I approve of that one quite a bit as well. Uh, I did not catch that. What was it? Well, uh, Tella is you, and uh, poor oh. is me. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is, oh, that is hilarious. <laughs> I'll take it. I'm a Porum fan. Uh huh. Uh, I I would like to, uh, you know, while our our runners are doing the, um, what appears to be very very similar checks right now, uh, shout out to our runners Tibble 2010 Moboy, uh, pushing things behind the curtains we have hush pyramid who rolled this beautiful seed our tracker ryudo and my amazing co-commentator here in the booth philosopher thank you so much it's definitely a pleasure to be here yeah this is uh you know what i am 1000 here per uh <laughs> i am 1000 percent here for just all of the awesomeness that, that's going on right now because it's like you know, we're commentating this race, and then, you know, at least on Tipple's side, you know, it's like, oh, hey, the two char two starting characters just happen to be the commentators for the race. I'm like, how, how does that even happen? It's, it's, yeah, <laughs> is, is this even randomized? Wow. Right? And I, I think on Mobile's side, I just saw a purchase of my favorite thing, the Artemis bow, so that should Ooh. be pretty cool getting through some of this overworld. Indeed. Now, we just need something 
better than iron arrows. Yeah, that would be very nice. Yeah, and then, uh, you know, uh, having glass hat actually this early on is a pretty a pretty strong purchase because while you have uh, team cloth robe, they uh, they definitely need something to help them t absorb those hits. Yeah, the uh, glass hat is definitely one of those things I pretty much always buy if I can, so. And speaking of better than iron arrows, I see some arrows that start with an A of the favorite variety. Well, heck, got the whole kit. <laughs> now we just need a, a, a crystal sword Cecil and away we go. Okay, that's crystal armor. I, I said crystal sword seed. <laughs> All right, Tibble going into Fabul Castle. Uh, let's see. Oh, well, we, we have... Okay, game... Listen, I, I said crystal sword, not angry sword. It, it I think the seed must be hard of hearing. It'll it'll be there, have faith. <laughs> yeah, it, it's kind of like uh, buffering a video. It's like, all right, I, well, oh oh, Chris, okay, yep, hang on, let me try again. It's, it's, it's just loading, but yeah, I mean, I guess the uh, question is, will Cecil be around? This is true. Uh, we uh, we have a few chances to get them, and actually, I don't. I think we've seen any character checks yet. No, no one's gone to pops. Um, and yeah, it looks like Tibble just uh, dipped Fabul to shop, so uh, no bosses yet either, other than the check uh, at Miss Cave, but we didn't take the fight, so. Yep, and you know, uh, you know, Flossie, uh, you, you've been around the community and playing for him for a little bit, uh, and you're familiar with the meta objectives, right? As far as. Just them being, just them existing. I don't know. Is this a meme or uh, is this a test? Oh, I'm, I'm, this is going to be a test. Okay, so the pseudo meta objective that I've just come up with is uh, we're going to go like 45 minutes into the seed and then you have to try and recall who the starting boss was that gave you the item. Oh, well, I already failed <laughs> because I never remember that. <laughs> <laughs> There's a starting boss now? Oh, uh, well, I mean, you know, Whatever gives you the, the key <laughs> right, item. No, no. If you well, actually, in this case, uh, we may have to remember it because one of the objectives is to liberate Baron Castle. It's very true. So we're probably going to see that um, as long as that Baron key shows up. Yep. Of course, you'll have to bear in mind that uh, our runners might not even get that key item. Bear in mind. I see what you did. Ah ha ha! The pun wizard returns. It looks like uh, we're going to see our first boss and character uh, probably uh, played through here uh, at Hobbs on Tybalt's side. Yep. Uh, who's it going to be? We have... I mean, it's it's literally up in the air. Who are you hoping for? Well, looks like we're getting a Palum. Obviously, Cecil would be something that would make you feel pretty secure. But Palum, you know, um, has a lot of utility in this flag set. He does, uh, and not to mention getting Palum this early on uh, is going to be super strong going up ordeals. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm not 100% sure that we saw a Stardust Rod in any of the shops, but if there is one around, that's a that's definitely a must grab for Palum. Definitely, and uh, even if there's not, having a Mute Knife will definitely help out with the the boss and in the Bygan spot, which drum roll. Is Ashura. I was gonna guess uh, Maga Sister, so I'm glad you I... said something. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? It, it's okay. I I ran a race once where I uh, where was it? I I mistook Leviathan for King Queen Evelyn sprite. Uh, Ooh. like like the little icon sprite, not actually in combat. Sure. So yeah. it's totally okay. We get it. It happens, right? <laughs> oh yeah. Great. And then also one of the other beautiful things about Mount Hobbs, like I personally am, am a fan of going down uh, Soho or Sohob uh, just because it's got, it, it, it really has a stronger chance of having decent loot back there. And the fact that you've got Tello with that exit allows you to go ahead and deep dive these dungeons. It allows you to go into the back of Hobbs and you just pop an exit. Uh, 
it just yeah it allows for uh, allows for a lot more looting uh but right, we see yeah that particular spot's often so good i'll just be tempted to do it without exit as well Yep, and then not even uh, well. Also mentioning that uh, going down ant line, like while it's not that uh, not that long of a run, it's still just kind of like, oh, I just did this. Do I have to walk back? Right, right. And looks like a uh, ant lion is actually replaced by mom bomb today. Yep, uh, ant lion on vacation somewhere unbeknownst. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I. I don't know. I, I I'm always on the fence about seeing Bomb Bomb anywhere, just about on the overworld, uh, because Bomb Bomb has a 10,000 hit point barrier in between uh, form changing. So like, trying to beat Bomb Bomb before she explodes into the six, she's got that 10,000 HP barrier, and just seeing her in Ant Lion is just, I I'm not gonna tear through 10,000 HP with you know a couple of kids and an old man. Sure, and you did see Tybalt kind of hang back and just sort of wait for the explode there, so I think he, he's well aware of the annoyance of Mom Bomb there. Mm -hmm. And we see on actually Mobile's side, uh, following just in Tybalt's steps to go and try and take out that Mom Bomb. Probably, ooh, actually probably just as quick, if not a little bit quicker, because of, uh, I believe, Mobile has Arty Arty. Right, right. Yeah, that's definitely going to help. And as a prize, we get the magma key, so underground <laughs> access awaits. Oh, how befitting. We get a magma key from a fire explosive thing. That makes sense. I can see it. Though I guess Mom Bomb isn't really a fire enemy, which I, it took me about 20 years to, to learn. <laughs> but the explosion damage, is it not fire? Is it non-elemental? We're lost. I... <laughs> Chat, some, somebody, somebody who's uh, more knowledgeable in uh, game mechanics. Uh, well, Mom Bomb equals uh, something or other. We can tell you that Mom Bomb is red. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, uh, I, can, I can, however, say that uh, Mom Bomb's explosion damage is magic-based. Interesting. Yeah, this game. <laughs> right? It, no bugs, only features. Uh, features and exclusivities. That is officially my biggest word of the day. So Tibble is throwing the key in the well, so probably going to see our first little peek of the underground here. While Moldboy cleans up the Mon Bon. Yep, and also getting his magma key. Um, now... The magma, uh, the the underworld is open. You still have a few checks on the overworld. What's uh, what's your game plan here? Well, generally, um, I would probably be tempted to do Baron in, and you know maybe pick up another character um, before hitting underground. Um, I do like having something to do underground, like you know tower key or something, but that doesn't always happen. Um, and I don't mind Tibble, you know, he uh, he's probably checking the shops down here, and they can be quite good. So if you have the money for it, I would say go for that. Definitely a valid point. And that shop has Cure Threes, which not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, but one and a half White Mages, eh, I, kind of a, I, I would at least pick up a stack of five or ten. Yeah, the Cure th Threes are really, really good to have in your back pocket, for sure. And as to, well, seeing, uh, nothing. Ooh, there are some charm arrows. Those are nice. But, yeah, uh... Yeah, not bad at all. But definitely, uh, coming down here to, to spy the shops, uh, go, run over to the Fame Arch, uh, grab that potential key item from Fame Arch, peek the bosses, check out the shops. Uh, I can definitely see the circuit it, that Tibble's doing, because if... He's going to do what I think he's doing. He's going to make this sort of clockwise circuit of uh, Dwarf Castle. Uh, I'm drawing a blank, the name of this town. Uh, oh, Tamara. Tamara, thank you. I, I'm like, Agar, no, he dropped the, the key down there. I'm, I, Ladies and gentlemen, genders of all ages, I've played this game before. It's okay. <laughs> I'm a professional. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's buying these shops and, uh, and these checks all in a... Uh, clockwise you know sort of loop 
Um, we see a crystal sword actually in Tomer. That's nice if a, if a Cecil ever pops up. Yeah, noted. Uh, this this up seems to be pretty generous with throwing crystal swords at you, so we'll see if uh, anyone even needs to purchase that if uh, Cecil pops up. You know, I, I there's a meme of uh, asserting dominance over the seed uh, by by throwing away or trashing the crystal sword when you have a Cecil. Uh, I I think that it is an even greater uh, assertiveness to not destroy or throw away the crystal sword, but to feed it to a fat chocobo. Well, there you go. Everyone's got their own way. Yeah, I mean, you know, chocobo's got to eat. See, my way of asserting dominance over the seed is using the crystal sword to fight enemies. <laughs> ah, but what if... Okay, now hear me out. What if we take the crystal sword and we use it as a magic item against the enemy? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> And no, we, oh, boys. we didn't get that tower key from the uh, Famous Freebie chest there, so... Ooh, one key, two key. Now the, uh, actually, you know what? That is a really good item to pick up right now, because even with a party such as this, you can do that, that tower key check. The Super Cannon Room only has something like 800 hit points. That's very true. So that's a key item check, a boss check. Um... And, you know, if, if you're doing what I think Tybalt's doing, literally just be in your circuit. Right, exactly. Yeah, just kind of sweep the clock around there. And yeah, as uh, Chet's pointing out, that is a pretty nasty fame march. We do have, I believe, a ruby sprite, which could mean elements or uh, Rubicon uh, in the king spot. And Val is the queen today. Yep, and Bull Boy picking up his pink tail from uh, Castle Fabul. So Tibble, will you do that? Yeah, probably doing that check. So now the question is, what what comes of it? And uh, will the I don't know if you would really call this a gamble to to do that as opposed to other checks. Yeah, I mean it it, it will potentially yield a key item, and um, obviously there are four trap chests on the way up. So you know I do like doing this check, um, doing it early. Uh, yeah, uh, Tybalt's got lit arrows, but he does reset, so I think he was, uh, intending on one-shotting those eyeballs there. Yeah, those, uh, cause, you know, if you don't one-shot those eyeballs, they're gonna summon the monster, and that one HP, I mean, you can only wish for one HP in the dream so often before it runs out. It only works once in a while, but when it does... <laughs> works 100% of the time, 40% of the time. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it looks like, a, I guess, do you know the HP of those offhand? Is it just straight 15? I believe so, yeah. That sounds about right. Because I know it's not 1240. No, we know this. <laughs> ah, and then we had on the favored right side on Mobile screen, the meme snake himself, Monsieur Le Doot de Doot. Leading right into Water Hag. So, uh,. Shouldn't be too big of an issue. Uh, Waterhag is not free on this flag set, so you do have to, you know, beat him down to uh, whatever the HP is for that slot instead of just hitting him three times. But shouldn't yep. be too bad. This is a slow spot. Yep. Uh, you know, the first time I played the Potion Party flag set, I uh, I was uh, uh, just absolutely confused because I'm like, oh, I hit Waterhag. Oh, look, there's the cutscene dialogue. I must wait a second. Now, three bosses are on? Cool. And then it starts punching me, and I'm going, what? Now, hang on. I, yeah, I, I think I, I knew um, intellectually what this flag set was all about, but Waterhag taught me what it really meant. So I feel you on that. And uh, as Chat's pointing out, alerts of 1425 health. Right, and we see, oh boy, playing a little bit of uh, Life Roulette. It looks like Tybalt picked up the spoon in one of those chests he just completed. 
and with a little bit more health than uh, than he had before, which is always a good thing because uh, I don't know about you, but I have a tendency to be terrible about healing my party after running through something like the Fey March. Yeah, it, it can it can definitely slip your mind for sure. I feel you on that. And yeah, uh, no key item at Baron Inn. I believe that was an apple of some kind. Um, and a Sid. Mm -hmm. Although Sid uh, is definitely a pretty good character to have just to kind of... Even though he takes a lot more damage than most everyone else, uh, he's still got a, lot, a large HP pool. I might be tempted to uh, get him his own Artemis bow personally. He can, he can do quite a bit of damage with one of those. You know what? I, I'm, I'm sensing that uh, Oprah would be proud of you in moments like this, and just you get an arty bow. You get an arty bow. I apparently love <laughs> this thing. So. <laughs> they are absolutely awesome. Uh, I, I uh, to which there, uh, I, I did something a while back, and not many people know this, but on the moon, when you fight the enemy, uh, the carries, you can steal Artemis arrows from them, and. When you're you're you know kind of running around and you run out of arrows because you didn't quite time the berserk to to not end on the turn properly, you're like, oh no, I need arrows. You just go and steal some Artemis arrows. It's pretty convenient. It is pretty handy. However, I don't think our runners will quite do that, uh, only because well, I mean, they can just go buy them. It's true. There's not a whole lot of incentive in this flag set to do random encounters at all because uh, you can't get experience from them. So. Nope. Which means uh, no D machine grinds, uh, no horseman grinds. Uh, I love you, buddy. I had to make a horseman grind joke. Uh, <laughs> uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, D machine grinds will net you, you know, doing the life glitch will net you quite a bit of money if pulled off properly. Uh, however, when setting up for the D-Machine manipulation, uh, you can, uh, if you miss it by however much, you can wind up doing a Horseman grind instead. Uh, still will net you a fair amount of experience, just not quite the amount that a uh, D-Machine will. Uh, we see Tybalt beating Leviathan up and blowing the super cannon to kingdom come. Uh, well, boy, attempting to do the warrior's chest, resetting out of it, and uh, now that he knows where it is, he can actually heal up before doing it. Right, and it looks like Tybalt is deciding not to check the top of tower unless I blinked and missed it, so just gonna uh, uh, take that key item and run. Yep. Uh, key or item. Unfortunately, the top of tower with this party, I, 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 if I'm going to attempt it, it's only going to attempt to look at it and then move on. Yeah, I don't think uh, we quite have the firepower to take it on yet. You're right. No, because uh, I believe starting Ella, uh, while he does have blink, blink can't save you in every situation. No, I wish it could, but it can't. And just a Dragoon Spear from uh, Sid's crew at the end of a uh, Super Cannon check there. Yep, and we see Tybalt now going over to uh, Sylph Cave to... Well, actually, this could be uh, a checking of the trap chest and or just setting up for Sheila 1. Because we know Sheila has got the goods. She usually does. Yeah, it looks like uh, yeah, Tybalt's just kind of beelining for the check here. Yep, and uh, I may have missed it, but did uh, Moleboy... I, I think Moleboy popped an hourglass on the warrior yeah, chest. Yeah, so Moleboy is uh, hourglassing, or did hourglass these warriors, and is making <laughs> short work of them with that weak cast. That was pretty oh, cool. But that wasn't just a weak cast, that was a recall. That was a weak uh, recall, I know. That was awesome. <laughs> so don't, don't, uh, don't get it in your head that this is what Tella does in general, because that's pretty rare. Uh, uh, get it in your head. That is what Tello does when he's balling. Like, you know, <laughs> teaching these young whippersnappers. Like, sits over here going, I know, I know what's up. I, I know this guy from like a couple hundred years ago or something. Totally. <clears throat> Tello knows weak. <laughs> and Twinmark was uh, hiding in that chest. 
So not not required and not generally a check that runners like to do. It, it does take some time, as fun as it is to hear the music. Yep, uh, although this is a rather fortuitous spot to pick up Twin Harpen, because you're running around the Fate March, your hit point's going to be at 1, so when you go to do it, you're pretty much set up to skip that initial cutscene. Yeah, that is a good point, um, and very good routing, um, if you can if you can do that for fa for uh, Twin Harp. Because that cutscene is too long. Agreed. This team in music, um, well, it, it's not so much this team, but it, more so I think that it's this team with Artie Artie. Uh, because while that spot at Twin Harp does have drastically high magic resistance, uh, the, the physical defense is something left to be desired. Yeah, that's true. That that's generally uh, not thought of as a difficult check, the twin harp check, but uh, it can be it can be tricky early on. So, yep. And we see Tibble getting his pink tail, uh, making his way. Good. I like the routing. Uh, go do Fabul, get the pink tail, talk to Sheila, and pick up a. Where's your free crystal sword? Uh, I mean. If Cecil doesn't pop up, that's 107,000 gold right there in your pocket. That's a lot of money. Always feels bad to sell, though. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Even but, if you, know, you don't when, need it. But you can't you those, eat, yeah. Yeah, I mean, when you get those seeds where it's like, oh, hey, cool, I got a crystal sword. Oh, there's another crystal sword. Why do I have six all of a sudden? Where did they come from? Yeah, you, you tend to, you know, lessen the, the restraints of feelings towards selling them. It's true. It's it's just decadent at that point. And yeah, it looks like uh, Tibold is gonna take that Tella online and go is going up ordeals now. Yep, uh, it's two well, two boss checks and a key item check, um, because as far as I've seen, none of our runners have actually seen D Mist, and Mobile checking to talk to the dwarf and Tamra. Uh, he is a farmhand. Farmhand or a farm boy, I can never tell with dwarves. It's like they, <laughs> they, they're just born with those big orange beards. <laughs> he just pick, comes out, a, a pint of ale in one hand, a big old beard. Just That's get me to work. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly how they are. Ooh. Orbs on ordeals. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah not, not a bad thing. It's, it's not, yeah. Um, this can be a long and, and very irritating box to deal with in certain spots. Um, here, it's pretty much just, you know, do it in order and get it done. Yep. Because uh, they're, well, we see, ooh, we see the gambler in full motion. Uh, because will he get one Globe 199s or will he just do that? Tibbolt seemed very confident there. <laughs> I see two people with bows on Tibbolt's side. Uh, is that double Artie over there? I am not 100% sure that Palum has an Artie, um, but I believe Porum definitely does. And what do we have for back attack? We have a Calbrano doll set. Uh, Fairy Blizzard in chat is saying Palum has an Archer bow. Oh, okay, close enough. Uh, <laughs> well, they start with an A, at least. I know, right? It's a step in the right direction. Look, he had to shoot a shot, and that was that. He's like, I've got an Artemis bow and another bow that starts with A. It's like, it's like the Artemis bow you have at home. Exactly. <laughs> Archer bows for white mages. Uh, maybe. I mean, unless, you know, you have an Artemis bone, in which case it doesn't really matter as much. And we should also point out that uh, with the boss bit, you cannot hourglass uh, or stop or uh, status effect the Cabrera dolls. Yeah, that's true. So, uh, looks like uh, Tibble equipped the Mute Dagger mid-battle here to kind of up uh, Palum's stats. Hopefully get through this before we see, uh, there's the big doll, it's too bad. <laughs> I mean, no matter what 
uh, platform or version or Final Fantasy game it's on, uh, the Cal Brainerd dolls are still terrifying to this day. I kind of like them. <laughs> well, clearly somebody hasn't played Final Fantasy XIV and fought the Cal Brainerd fight. I, I actually haven't, so... Oh, I, I okay. <laughs> they, uh... I mean, I was excited to, to see them because, uh, you know, all the nostalgia. Uh, but the way that they transform into the Cal, the Cal Brena, it's, uh, yeah, it, it, it's uh, uh, different, we'll call it. Uh, it's a lot, a lot darker. I'll look it up. But uh, yeah, Tybalt didn't really have much of a problem with that fight. Um, and Hero Porum is going to face uh somebody alone in the changing room here yep uh, you know I, I i think a second meta objective would be to uh to fight the boss in the changing room with just your bare hands oh my uh yes there's a story behind porum punching zaromas to death and uh as we see it is not a key item that came from the changing room i believe that was an artemis bow actually was it oh i was like yeah, oh yeah the other side. that's funny <laughs> yay which means that uh it can take the archer bow off and just go double arty or uh if table goes and picks up what we know to be a sid throw a second artemis bow on sid yeah definitely not a bad thing Moboy on the other side is uh, cleaning out the tower. Pretty much, um, we just saw the spoon come out of, of the tower as far as key items, correct? Yep, correct. So there could be something uh, important waiting up top. There could. And only time will tell, maybe. But yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Mulboy also decides to uh, just kind of uh, check out after this fight. Would not blame him. Uh, much like a few other spots in the game, uh, the Tower of Babel is one place that you cannot exit out of and you cannot warp out of. However, it does have... Technically, there's three save spots. Uh, there's one outside. There's one right before the Super Cannon Room, and then there's one before uh, Keyless Tower. Yeah, that's true. You can definitely utilize those. Yep, I, I have done it before. I know some of our more seasoned runners have done it uh, to where they'll just go ahead and they'll see the boss, not like an item, and then just saves come out of it. Uh, Mobile is starting to check the eyeball chests. Uh, we'll go ahead and hit that oh, that eyeball for a lot more damage. Yeah, Sid slinging the uh, lit arrows uh, is definitely no joke. Now, you know, it's kind of funny that he... We, we always see Sid uh, do his best with bows and arrows as opposed to, well, really just giant wrenches. That's true, but if Sid's your hero and you end up forging that fiery hammer, it's it's pretty uh, chef's kiss, I gotta oh, say. <laughs> oh, definitely. I agree 100%. But yeah, in general, um, you know, I consider the Artemis bow his, his best weapon, really. Yep, that's right up there with uh, Kane's best weapon. Uh, you know, debatable, but uh, I, I think that his Kane's best weapon, when not forging, is uh, the defense sword. Yeah, I agree. I agree, actually. And Tybalt receives his Sid and Apple prize, while Mulboy sees that Maga sisters are up top uh, of tower and is going to go for it. I'm here for it. Oh, only the Maga sisters. Uh, I am here for it because that's a, well, relatively free fight. Yeah, this shouldn't be too bad. Um, we don't have mute arrows, but uh, nevertheless, I think Mulboy uh, did some prep um, before getting into this fight. So we'll see how it goes doesn't have uh, mute arrows, but I do believe I saw Moboy pick up charm arrows. Yeah, um, yeah, I do think uh, we saw Sid get equipped with those, yes. And Tybalt is going back to Evelyn Castle to check those trap chests for key items. 
Yep, uh, definitely a good time to go ahead and do those. Because that's three quick checks, uh, a lot of experience, and, well, potentially three key items. Especially with one of them be maybe being darkness. Yeah, definitely. It does like to hang out here. Though I found uh, darkness likes to hang out at top of tower too, so we'll see. Yep. Uh, you know, this this is the point where we see runners uh, tending to that uh, kind of split their their routing. You know, in the overworld, it's it's very limited routing. And then once you open up either to the underworld or the moon, uh, that's when you get to see like, okay, are they going to stay on the same path or just go completely different routes? Yeah, it's interesting in that way. Uh, beginning, everyone's pretty much the name of the game for everybody is just like shop, get your equipment, get your money, you know. So you do see similar routing, but uh, you do see a lot of divergence in this flag set after that. And that was a little too quick, but it, it, it was an, uh, an item in white. Yeah. yeah. Which uh, Tibble basically slammed on Palom immediately. Oh, of course. And we saw on Mobile side, Mobile side uh, that hook being picked up. Which is going to be nice, you know, nice little turn in for the pink tail if you ever get around to it. But uh, with it not being an objective, not necessarily something that's going to be wildly sawed out. Yeah, Pinktail not so much. Um, it does kind of uh, open up the uh, hook route, which uh, doesn't need to be completed um, necessarily, unless there's a required D-mist up there. But there are also two trap chests there that uh, could contain key items, so we'll see if it, if it comes into play here. Oh, and a character as well, so that, that magical Cecil could be there. Yep. Uh... Yeah, actually, and then not to mention uh, Evelyn Shops. Uh, you've also got the Stale Men chest down there. So all the while, or all the while, worthwhile to go down there and check. But uh, and actually, now that I think about it, I don't think Mobile has done the Evelyn Trap chest either. So that would be some uh, some pretty gnarly routing. Yeah, yeah, that, that is something um, I, I do run into sometimes at this point in the seed. Um, you kind of have a lot of options, you know, so you want to keep your routing really efficient, but you also don't want to forget things. Right. And uh, for the pink tail turn in, uh, it, it is not like vanilla where you'll get the adamant or you'll actually, as uh, Jess pointing out, it, it is a random tier seven or tier eight. And in this particular flag set, adamant armors are turned off. And it looks like Moboy is going right for the uh, Dwarf Castle bosses here. And Warp Glitch is on, so uh, you can get two key items out of this check. If you have Warp. Yes. If you have Warp, which Palum does learn at 29. I know this because I accidentally made the mistake of trying to slingshot Palum, uh, only getting him to 26. Yeah, I, I know that you, <laughs> you can come in here with 26, uh... But if you get a boss with split experience, you can kind of run into some trouble with that. Yep. Uh, yeah, there, there's a few things surrounding the warp glitch that you can get kind of cheeky with. Uh, including, but not limited to, if you're out of money, you can actually stay at the end and then just keep casting warp and get back to the crystal. No kidding. I did not know that. Mm -hmm. Fun fact. Uh, the uh, other one being if you don't have a Palum and you have Viridia, Viridia learns Warp at a much sooner level. It's something like 13 or 15, something like that. Uh, so you have the ability to just take a small child with summoning casting in here instead. Very true. And actually, um, in this case with this particular party, since the Tela... At least one of these Tellas is online, if not both. I believe Moleboy is the one who went through ordeals. Uh, he's got warp, so, you know, you're pretty covered in that case. Uh, and Tibble did go through... Yeah, yeah, Tibble did go through ordeals. Uh, so yeah, don't need... 
why are we even talking about this? I they even they know. gotta tell us. <laughs> <laughs> Mechanics. Uh, an ant lion not in his native homeland, but maybe he was on his way there. You know, we, he just wants to go on vacation. And we uh, we interrupted that. We did, however, pick up a cane here, though. So uh, there's some there's some beefy cane weapons. I believe there's an Avenger around. Uh, so we'll see if anyone picks that up. Oh, and I believe yep. uh, Dra Dragoon Spear was um, the Super Cannon Bryce, so. That is absolutely correct. Uh, Dra Dragoon Spear from Super Cannon. The Avenger was in either Mist or Fabul. Uh... Crystal King. Uh, yeah, so uh, having that Avenger uh, for someone, you know, if our runners go back and get it, will definitely be very nice on, to have on someone because that's just free Berserk. All right, so we're running through some additional trap chest. He's going for the uh, the up dog chest. This is a nice, easy, fun little check. Uh, you don't have to have the Earth Crystal, as you can see, to actually do it. Um, ooh, I didn't see what that was. It was yellow, though. Uh, and you can it. also you check the Omega Sister spot for uh, D-Mist as well, which looks like it's what, what's Tibble's doing. Sorry I interrupted you. Yep, no, you're all good. Uh, I was just going to say we saw a Sand Ruby on Boy side and a Luca Key on Tibble's. Um, and we will actually get to see who's taking a nap in Kaipo. If one of our runners decides to go there. I, I think we did actually get a glimpse of that, and I believe it might have been a dupe Sid. So, mm. no, nothing too exciting. It's close. We were on the right track with the character that starts with C. We're getting there. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's gonna happen, I swear. <laughs> the game is still buffering. You know, and it's... I, 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 I'm enjoying the fact that we're, we're now 44 minutes into the seed, and there's not a single objective done. There's no darkness crystal. There's no... Uh, half a forge, no baron key, uh, but it looks like Mo Boy did get an earth crystal. Yeah, that's pretty exciting. I, I do enjoy that check quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, I, I I've noticed on this particular flag set, I'm I'm excited to see how many chests uh, that are sixty four thousand and up pop out. I feel like the the loot gods have been pretty good to uh, the runners tonight. It's it's been pretty nice. It's it's been a nice array of uh, of what's either able to be bought or just uh, the the treasure seems a little bit low. But you know, for for all the times that it's low, you know, it's high somewhere else. That's very true. And Mulboy is checking some sylph. Uh, trap chests on the way down um i i don't i definitely don't blame him for doing this i'm sure uh everyone's kind of looking at the um objectives like we just were and saying like okay you know where's my opponent at here have they completed anything am i behind yeah and you know actually i was just going to comment on that because you know while we are this this far into the seed you know uh, on mobile boy side, there's got to be the idea of, uh, hey, we're you know, I'm 45 minutes in, I've got all these key items, no objectives, you know, got to be feeling behind. While also on Tipple's side, you know, he's only got uh, what, five key items, and it's like I, I've got to be a little behind right now because this isn't my normal playstyle, or this isn't you know how things might normally go. Uh, so it's it, I'm curious to see what each of them kind of had the mindset of going into the or like being this far into the seed yeah it'll be interesting uh to ask after the race for sure and it's just so funny you know you saying that because i mean i never feel ahead i don't know if anyone ever feels like oh i'm i'm really ahead when they're when they're running one of these things it's definitely nerve-wracking definitely and especially like with the flag set like this and having k trap on and not really getting any key items out of them yeah, yeah, it's 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 frustrating, and and you do, um, you know, when you have a lot of key items but not a lot of objectives done, and not the key items you're looking for, you know, your routing, at least for me, does you know tend to get a little scattered because there's there are so many options, you know, and a lot of times, uh, you know, you you fifty fifty a check, and it's just like, oh, I, I did the wrong one, I got to go do something else now, and it feels it feels kind of bad when you're racing. Yeah, and um, 
you know, a lot. Some people will say, so long as you just keep moving and making decisions, uh, you'll you'll be fine because you're not just kind of stopping and wasting time thinking about like where where should I go. Uh, I, I think there's room for debate for both sides of that, where it's like, okay, I need to stop. I've done this, that, and the other. I should really go and do X, Y, and Z. Uh, because at this point, with no objectives having been done, I mean, it's anyone's game still. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's Yeah, we can't say, you know, one runner's ahead of the other. Um, it really, really is anyone's game, for sure. Yep, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and call that uh, Darkness Crystals behind Twin Heart. Just because. It's it's feeling <laughs> that way. It really kind of is. We'll see. Uh, there's a voice in my head saying no, but uh, you know, I, I, I think that it just it needs to happen. You know, you got you got to be hooked on a feeling for it to occur. Maybe hooked on a feeling will be the harp song too. That would be amazing. I'm not, like I'm not even gonna lie. That <laughs> <laughs> if if we're here in the booth and all of a sudden I just start hearing ooga chaka ooga chaka, I'm just gonna lose it in a good way. The best way. All right, Mulboy is uh, cleaning out the castle here, um, and Blue Wizard is doing... This is the first uh, dwarf boss, correct? The uh, yes. Dark Elf? Yeah. Yep. See, now that song's stuck in my head, which I'm... I'm... <laughs> it's, it's our own fault. Uh, you know what? I'm okay with it. I am believing... So in other news, uh, unlike the Twin Harp, uh, when you fight Dark Elf in a different location, uh, he's not gonna hit. Well, he's gonna do his classic tri elemental attack. Uh, but difference being that if you die here, well, you died, and then you gotta do the fight over. Uh, there is no Eddie to to save you with a magical harp that reaches across the game. Unfortunately, not. But Tibble didn't need it. He's That's there. okay. That's okay, yep. And um, so he is through that fight, and we see Mulboy continuing going down the right side of uh, Eblin Castle. Uh, they're going, you know, while they're uh, retracing each other's footsteps, we're going to give a quick shout out to our people behind the scenes, our amazing restreamer, Hush Pyramid, for, for rolling this gem of a seed, uh, in my opinion. Um, you know, the person pushing the buttons, awesome, awesome for you though. Uh, and then the amazing, ever so awesome, Flossy Fern to my s sort of digital right. <laughs> digital right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and obviously, shout out to Blue Wizard. This is uh, very, very fun. Yeah, it's, uh, I feel like being in, in the booth here, it's, uh, it's kind of like with theater, you know, there's that stage left, stage right. Well, this is the, the digital right, the digital left. I'm, I'm going to refer to it like that from now on. I love it. Yep. <laughs> and uh, Scala Kitty is pointing out that it's uh, Rayudu's first time tracking, so congrats. Yes, uh, because for as much as we have socially derailed during this race in the commentary booth, uh, Ryodo has been just on point, so huge shout out to them. Absolutely. And then also, don't forget to go ahead and check out our runners, uh, Tybalt, uh, twitch.tv slash Tybalt 20 slash 2010. And then uh, Moboy at, uh, I believe it's just twitch.tv slash Moboy. I'm going to go ahead and push buttons here. Oh, Pipe Pyramid beat me to it. Uh, Moboy5454. Uh, without them, we, we, we wouldn't be here right now, actually, uh, because we wouldn't be commentating on the race. That's very true. Alright, uh, Tibble picking up his Earth Crystal while Moboy having taken that uh, that hook and going down the hook route, as the name implies. Yeah, oh, buying some elixirs. I love to see it. Uh, I never remember to use them, but they're great to have. See, I, I yeah, I, I forget about them too, but uh, the other part of it is I, <laughs> I tend to spend way too much money on them and then forget about them. Ah, yeah, that's the other the other thing. Ooh, although there is a dwarf axe in there, uh, which is kind of uh, kind of neat to see because you can go in back road, Kane, if 
if so desired. Yeah, that's always a uh, that's always nice. I, I I tend to not use back row cane a whole heck of a lot, but sometimes it can come in uh, pretty handy for sure. It can come in handy, I think, when you don't really have anyone that can take a hit and you need yeah. someone to just survive a couple of punches. And Moleboy hits the uh, Stalemen chest here. Uh, not going to be too much of an issue. Uh, this can be kind of like a nasty surprise chest. It can make your party go to sleep, um, but Moleboy is geared for it, looks like, so shouldn't be too yep. bad. Yep, uh, in this particular flag set, uh, that will be about the closest disease that you'll see. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, the Zynga. <laughs> Ah, uh, Moboy picking up a package for his troubles. Not necessary. Uh, there is a character and a boss behind it. It could be Cecil, it could be Demas, but it, it's a check you really don't want to deal with unless you have to. Yeah, that's... I mean, although it's... Yeah, like, like you said, if you don't have to do the check, definitely um, avoid it because it's a few minutes long. Sure, there's a character in there. Uh, there might be a Demas. But, I mean, it, it in of itself is a gamble. Well, looks like Big C is on the table here. He's hanging out in Evelyn Cave. Uh, Moboy but, um, did not go through Ordeal, so he's still in Dark Knight form, but he does exist. Yep, uh, and he is very much acquirable, which, I mean, yeah, uh, we know that Crystal Sword's for sale. We know that a couple of x cows have been picked up. Uh, so it's uh yeah we'll, we'll kind of see how uh how things go from here because even though that you can blow up the seed with a crystal sword cecil it doesn't mean much if you're not finding the uh the key items you need for the objectives Ooh, actually tybalt's about to do music look at that i guess we better <laughs> oh we're allowed to talk though right our, our restreamer said that we could <laughs> All right, and that is Tibble getting through that fight and getting himself a lovely bonk for Yang, i.e. the pan. It's, yeah, absolutely loaded uh, Cape Magnus, because uh, we found Demas there as well. So yeah, it would be interesting to see if Darkness is behind uh, Radia's mom. Yep, um, and on Moboy's side, picking up another Crystal Sword. Yeah, we'll see if uh, Moboy finds that Cecil as well. Oh wait, Moboy did find the Cecil, never mind. It's uh, Tybalt, who did not. Yep, and uh, let's see. So, as Shad points out, that is the that song was Winters from Earthbound. I believe we're going to see Moboy go directly to ordeals now. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of a kind of a. You gotta like, do it. Yeah, I mean, you have to. <laughs> Although, I mean, you, we we talk about asserting dominance over the seed, uh, 
Like, oh yes, I have multiple crystal swords and a Cecil, but no Pally Cecil. Imagine. If this was not actually, uh, actually, you know what? If this was not Sea Hero, I can definitely see that as a viable option. Uh, you know, keeping Cecil at that sort of lower agility forever would be a beautiful anchor. It's very, very true. And yeah, totally different mindset from, uh, yeah, anchoring kind of in the more like classic free enterprise experience for sure in this flag set. It's definitely a factor, but it's not as, um, it's not as strict as uh, anchoring for the Z fight, which is not included in this flag set. Well, it, not entirely. I mean, you can go up there. I don't think that uh, much is going to happen. You'd have to find out for yourselves, chat. But uh, you know, chat, go, 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 grab a seat, run up to Zerumas, say hi, tell them the Blue Wizard sent you. You can do it. It's a doable thing. We believe in you. And we see on uh, Tybalt's side that he is fighting Sir Blargamus the Fifth himself. Excuse me, Sir Blargamus the Fourth himself. <laughs> Get it right. <laughs> Gosh. Yeah. And yeah, was... that was the yeah, Omega Sister spot. Yeah, not, not a not a difficult boss. No, not not so much. Now, I, I would not like to see that fight uh, in the sealed cave. That would be a little rough, I think, with as speedy as that is. Yeah, that actually would be kind of a, like a one of the worst, more difficult spots to see Bahamut, for sure. Definitely. Rather him than uh, Golbez, though, there. True. It'd be like something out of... Uh... I don't know, like Avatar Last Airbender, just flinging spells and stuff left to right. It's like, how are you doing this? Why? Leave me alone. I want to go home. <laughs> and uh, Tibble is getting his paladin a different way, uh, sitting in the Rosa spot in Zot there. You know, this is just uh, uh, free, Final Fantasy IV Free Enterprise, Rosa's Revenge. There you go. And like, how do you like being tied up on a chair underneath the guillotine? That looks like CPU. Quality. Yeah. <laughs> and just a Mylon and Friends fight here uh, in the Val spot in Zot. Shouldn't be too big of a deal. Nope. Nope. Uh, although, uh, Flossy, you ever, you ever take out Mylon first in this I particular fight? I got warned against that early and I've never <laughs> tried. So I, oh. I hear his friends get pretty pissed. Well, uh, you know, Mylon happens to when... It, it, so, Berserking is a double-edged sword, right? Uh, when you Berserk someone, they will randomly attack, you know, any of the targets on the screen. How, and that's great, because they'll do damage, they'll move faster, uh, but they will also potentially just one-shot Mylon, uh, which will... <laughs> cause his friends to enrage and deal a lot of unexpected damage um, because they are not just there for show they are there to avenge the you know the death of their master or their lover or you know I, I don't know the relationship I, I try not to judge uh, <laughs> but uh, they will punch really really hard no matter what spot they're in now they're not gonna do quad nines at like Baron one. But, you know, when you go to Baron 1 early on, they're going to do enough to one-shot you. So, sure. uh, definitely take out Mylon first if you want an entertaining experience for that fight. <laughs> Noted. I'll have to try it once. Yep, it's right up there with uh, Berserking the Toad Lady. Uh, and I believe the uh, key or quote-unquote key item from Mazat was actually just just a crystal ring which is a great piece of gear but it's not it's not a darkness crystal no nope. uh you know like we said the game is still loading uh, they got the crystal part right just not the uh the darkness part and we see on Tybalt's side uh Rydia's mom paying Rydia's mom having the goods this time with a one half of forge Slowly getting towards completing one objective. Yep, and um, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and call out someone in chat here. Uh, 
Tech and Rye, uh, I, I, I appreciate the fun. I am here for it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's, I, we'll, we'll play that. I'll just, I'll just go ahead and call it that. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, we see Tybalt now going down in, into Sylph Cave, uh, probably to go ahead and whack Yang over the head with a pan. Um, you know, I, okay, I, I need to get your opinion on this, Flossie. Do you think the pan, in this case, is made out of adamantite? Or adamantine? Ooh. You know, I, I actually always pictured it as a cast iron, but I think I'm going to change my cannon now. I, I think well, I that's mean, pretty it, good. Because it's lightweight, it, you know, but it's also pretty sturdy. <laughs> I think you're yeah, right. I, I, well, I mean, it could very well look like a cast iron pan, but be made out of, like, you know, uh, the adamant ore. Th that's, I, that's it. I think we figured it out. I think this mm -hmm. is it. It's like when striking a, uh, a friendly character, it will actually heal them. There you go. Yeah, you know, and I think uh, uh, adamantine as a cooking utensil, I, I want to correlate it to like cooking with a copper skillet. You know, it'll just disperse the heat all over evenly. Oh, Sheila does not have the goods in this case. Only a yeah. Crystal. That was she, yeah. Sheila one on Moleboy's side. Sheila two here on Tybalt's side. Uh, which ooh, that's darkness. That's uh, darkness. Right. So that means that uh, Twin Harp is hard required. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> you love to uh, see it. Oh yes, and uh, you know you also love to see what are we up to? Uh, four crystal swords, five crystal swords. Who can give say? or take, give or take, forty-seven. All right, so now, now, the you know one of the big questions comes into play. Of, uh, I mean, obviously you're, you you got to go ahead and go somewhere. Do you go? to the moon first, or do you go do giant? Um, I, mm, I might be tempted to, to go through giant here. Uh, you do have the last arm chest to check. Um, it can net you a ton of experience, uh, but you also run the risk of running into a very nasty boss at element spot. Well, both spots, really. I mean, uh, alt gauntlet's still on the table, I believe. Dark Knight Cecil's around, so... Could be quite the risk. Yep, uh, Valvalos, DKC, and, um, well, Golbez is not necessarily pleasant up here. Um, but I think, personally, I think that you go giant first. And I say that because, you know, you've got that last arm chest there. Last arm chest could net you the other half of Forge, it could grab you the Baron key. Uh, to where, if that occurs, you don't actually have to go and do giant all the way. That is very true, and a great point, uh, for sure. I believe we we did see Val at uh, Queen's spot, so she, though required, oh, yep. may not necessarily be something we have to do, but we'll see. True. And, uh, I mean, Crystal Sword, Cecil, make Val, Val is go boom. Yeah, not, not so bad, not so scary. Um, yep. Tybalt is actually deciding to, um, do the, uh, hairdryer chest first here. Um, maybe. Maybe or not. Yeah. Yeah, oh, and it looks like, uh, we didn't get a save before, uh, raising the, the big whale on Tybalt's side there, so we ended up back at Dwarf Castle. Oh, no. Is this pre- okay. This is pre-Cecil. Wow. Okay. Oh no. Wow. Tibble, buddy. He's, this is pre harp. Wow, okay. So that yeah, that's a that's a bit of a gut punch there. Um we've all been there, we've all done it. But yeah, Tibble's uh pushing forward. Yep, yep, I you know what? He is he is uh with several nicknames and one of them is the man of the people. Um Ooh. I, I, you know what? But I'm here for it because I, I'm curious to see. Like, because, like, again, we're now uh, past the hour mark and still no objectives complete. 
Right, I mean, um, even with that setback, uh, a lot can still happen here. Um, good, good gravy, I, I don't even know what key items he had at this point. Um, oh, wow, uh, chat, this is, this is something. Uh, but I mean, this is also, I, I feel like, a testament to the de the dedication to the seed, to the tournament, to the race. Because when you have a save file that goes that far back, you know, a lot of runners will, you know, they'll just, they don't want to go through it all again. They think they're too far behind and then they'll do like a dot .ff, uh, which 1000% do not blame them. Uh, so the fact that we see Tibble, you know, being back this far and still continuing the race, you know, I, I just, I want to, I want to call them out for this, uh, like in a good way. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when you, you know, any race is going to be stressful, getting restreamed adds a little extra layer of nerves to it. So um, anyone who can like push through that, I definitely have a ton of respect for And yeah, as uh, Chat pointed out, uh, the runners have kind of ended up in tandem because of that. So we're seeing seeing Harp again. We we can still talk through it, right? Oh yeah, they don't. Right? Care. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's fine. It's fine. Right, uh, Tibble is through Harp round two there, so we've got we've gotten to hear a lot of music tonight. It's a good thing. Yep, and also as Chat pointing out, um, that even though Tibble, you know, got set back a bit further, um, he he's done those checks, so he knows what not to do and where to go, and he can cut out sort of like a lot of the fluff. Yeah, that's definitely a very good point. So I'm, I'm curious to see like how he he goes about trying to you know make up some of that time. And Moboy's uh, choosing to go through the uh, package check. Looks like his Cecil does have the Avenger on, so this cutscene may take a little longer than normal because of that. Yep, if memory serves, this spot has 20,000 HP. 20,000, okay. Like, you wouldn't think it that this spot has 20,000 HP. Maybe 5,000 or something, but nope, 20,000 HP. Yeah, and as uh, Chet's pointing out, this may have just been a mistake entering Mist at the wrong side and just deciding to go through with the cutscene. Uh, maybe due to not knowing if uh, he saved before, you know. Again, it's something we've all done. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think I was running just a, a, a practice seat the other night, and um, I'm like, I was feeling very confident. I'm like, yeah, you know, I, I, I was, you know, 
goofing up some mechanics, and then uh, I, I saw a boss I didn't like, and I reset, and I'm like, I, I was like an hour and a half in, and I'm going, all right, yeah, I'm just gonna look at my time, and that's 20 minutes into the seed. Never mind, I'm done. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, as Solaris points out, 65,000 hit points at that spot with where Rydia normally is. Uh, that's a lot higher than 20,000. Yeah, um, crazy. Yeah. Uh, huh. I, like, I know it's doable with perfect anchoring. Good old RA1, but uh, yeah, that's that's a lot of health. All right, and Tibble is uh, getting that darkness again, getting back on yep. track here. While Mole Boy is doing a uh, Zot. Yep. Uh, oh, this, uh, this, yeah. Because even without having Cecil in your party, if you know where to go, you don't need Cecil. It's very true. He, uh, uh, not, not required to beat the seed. <laughs> Very Absolutely. Nice to have, but not required. <laughs> Let's see. And then, uh, okay, so uh, I know that, that we know that Val Valis was one of the people at Fame March. Uh, who was the other one? Um. Oh, I'm blanking now. I was so focused on Val. Um, <laughs> oh, it was uh, it was either Ruby or Elements. Yeah. Ah, uh, uh, so yes. I don't believe we've seen either or you know either of them yet, so it could be either, correct? Correct. And then uh Elements is at uh, Waterfall, uh magically. Okay, by, so uh, that's definitely Ruby. Yep. So uh good old leg at uh at Fame March there. Which did you know? Uh fun fact. Um and, and I learned this just recently. That's uh, Ru uh, so you know how Ruby has the uh, like that that you know when his cape's closed, he has uh, he absorbs ice and water. Right. Did you know that that elemental resistance doesn't actually go into effect until he closes his cloak for the first time? Oh, so before that? Oh, that's interesting. Yep, like he has to do an open the open the cloak and then mm -hmm. close it, and then after he closes it is when the the absorbing kicks in. Yeah, I actually didn't know that. I thought that was pretty cool. Of course, Good. now that you guy. Yep, yeah, uh, like I said, uh, like like we've discussed earlier, uh, there are no bugs in this game. There are only features. Exactly. And we see uh, Tibble seeing a punch mage up top the moon i mean what better training than you know for a monk than on the moon you know zero g's gotta help somehow i don't know <laughs> look i i feel like he uh he would be like keith richards and just hanging upside down doing training there you go and uh tybalt taking a, a quick snooze before he uh Starts to do his rounds on the moon. Going back to that uh, hairdryer chest. Hopefully it's something good. Hopefully he saves. Yes. You know, I, I'm. Let's see. I, I'm all. I'm all on board with uh, as chat's kind of discussing here about uh, what to name uh, Yang on the moon, and uh, I, I'm. I'm here for Kung Fu Moon. Simple to the point explains everything. I like it. Exactly. Yep. And yeah, displaying here why it's nice to save at least one hourglass. Um, don't use them all in Evelyn because there's some pretty, you know, uh, difficult trap chests that um, are. It's nice to use these on later on. If, if you can save it, do it. Definitely. As. Um... As it's well displayed here, actually. And that was the uh, bearing key, so that is an objective on the table that's not moon related. So now the question is, 
Does Tibble keep going, making his rounds on the moon? Or does he follow that rabbit hole and go chase the Baron Key? It's kind of a tricky one. Um, we don't really have, you know, ideal levels right now. Um, but also, you really don't want to go back either. So it looks like Tybalt is kind of prepping to just hang out on the moon for a minute. Completely understandable, uh, because without uh, things like the Earth Crystal and Sand Ruby that he had earlier, uh, and the the one half of Forge from Fredia's mom, uh, you know he's only at uh, was that five, four, six, nine, nine key items. So he's still got to get that one more key item before he starts earning some uh, some bonus XP. Yeah, that's very true. Um, and meanwhile, Mole Boy is through Zot. I can't remember what was here, but it wasn't that exciting. Let's see. Oh, oh, Crystal Ring. Well, good item anyway. Yep, uh, I was uh, part way there. You know, we, we've got Crystal Armor, Crystal Ring. Uh, haven't seen Crystal Crystal yet. Which is not an entirely useless key item in this flag set. Because uh, Crystal Crystal will still count as a key item. Doesn't do much more than that, but it sure is a key item. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a pretty gentle moon boss. It's Kaipo guards at the uh, um, Mursami spot. You know, I'm trying to think. I, I feel like I've fought the Kaipo guards uh, on a flag set that has no free bosses. But I I don't remember. Like, if you still take out if you take out the officer, does he still? Or, I'm sorry, if you take out the soldiers, does the officer still flee? He does, yeah. So, okay. yeah, um, one quake here is going to do quite a bit. Um, you, Yeah, like, as you said, you don't have to take out everybody. The officer will go away on his own. Or if you take the officer out first, they will start punching each other. <laughs> so, uh, what One of my favorite scripts. Like, our officer's down. What do we do? I don't know. Let's hit each other. I, I love like, it. <laughs> You know, and I was just thinking about it. Uh, yeah, one one good uh, quack will take out all of the the guards. Um, and you know, when you think about it, when you think about the true essence of quake, i.e., quack, everyone ducks. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Physically painful. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, uh, hopefully I don't get grounded for this one. I feel like you get a few freebies, right? Come on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, some of our viewers are not terrified. Mm. That one, that one's a, a, a little bit out there because Terra being Earth. Earth, you see. <laughs> yep. yeah. And we see from a self chest, uh, the other half of Forge. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah, so uh, we do have an objective down on Tybalt's side, but Moboy is about to get his own objective down, uh, and Forge is a good one. Yep. Yeah, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, yeah, yeah that's four Darkness Crystal objectives. Uh, so I'm curious to see what else comes out of Sylph. Well, actually, we know that the rest of self isn't actually required at this point. Oh right, yeah, that is true. Yep. And uh, in Bahamut spot, Cave Bahamut, we have the other set of guards. It's the Baron guards who are a little bit meaner, to say the least. Yeah. And yeah, Tybalt's gonna reset out of that fight. I mean, I do, I do not blame him. Uh, however, though, you do have two blink casters. That's uh, very true. Unfortunately, you can't mute the guards. Yeah, uh, they do have the boss bit, yeah, so no mute, no toad, as Chad is asking. Um, you kind of just have to deal with them. Yeah, uh, although, I wonder, even though you can't mute them, can you berserk them? That is a good question. Oh, everyone's saying no. Oh, they're saying no to the toad question. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's a, that is a very good question. I'm sure somebody knows. Do, 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 do. Yeah. 
<laughs> and, and yeah, Tybalt, uh, instead of dealing with those guards at all, has decided to go for the giant, which is a, it's an interesting check. Yep. Uh, the uh, because Tybalt actually, while he knows where, he knows that Radius mom has the one half of Forge. He doesn't know where the adamant rock is. So definitely going up to check the last arm is a, a really good play here. Uh, still with nine key items. He could pull out... Actually, he could actually grab... No, uh, judging off of Mobile side, there's not a key item up here yeah, that he no, can get. Yeah, no, there's not going to be one. Yep, that's right. Trying to think of an uh, ideal piece of non key item equipment that you could pull here <clears throat> for this particular party. I'm not sure that we saw a Stardust Rod, so that's probably what I would be hoping for. Uh, I mean, Stardust Rod, Power Shirt, Zeus Power Gauntlet. Shirt. Yeah, Zeus Gauntlet's great. Uh, actually, I think a Zeus Gauntlet would do this party really, really good. Yeah, that's very true. But unfortunately, we uh, we get yet another Holy Sword there. And uh, it looks like Tybalt was just here to do the last arm check, so he is sleeping. Yep. Uh, do you not blame him? Because, uh, well, let's see. He's got that. Th so three, four, five. Yeah. Because um, with all of the other checks, uh, he... Well, actually, no, I take that back. One, two. Technically, both of our runners. No, uh, Tibble actually is in go mode. Now that I think about it, adding up things, counting correctly. Yeah, that is true. It took me a sec as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Tibble uh, going for the easier of the uh, checks right now, going to liberate Baron Castle. There, there shouldn't be too many snags waiting for him here. Oh, uh. Tip, tip. Tibble, were you trying to buy 10 Blizzard Spears? Sometimes Why? you just need 10 Blizzard <laughs> Spears. <laughs> I mean... Do not question this. I, you know what? I'm here for it. Uh, I am all here for it. Maybe he's hoping for an edge to pop up. That would be kind of cool. That is something you can do. Um, you know, if you do have an edge in your party, he can dart. And it, it, there's a lot of utility there, so... Oh, yeah. We'll see. <laughs> I was just hoping to uh, to see like a hundred train spears be bought and no edge pop up. It'd be rather draining. Anywho, uh, Tibble making his way through the underground caverns and on his way to the bossy. What was the name of that boss that gave the first item? Uh, that was Azura. <laughs> All right. And I only remember it because you mentioned it earlier. If you hadn't have done that, um, I would be scratching my head right now. Yep. Uh, we. I mean, we are an hour and a half in, and we see one objective for one runner on the board. Uh, although I, I anticipate that that's going to very quickly change uh, drastically uh, here in like the next five to ten minutes. Yeah, uh, Tibble is about ready to uh, get his second objective done. Moleboy getting his first, and we're going to see what is uh, behind Forge for uh, Porum. I guess, is that is there only Seraph staff here, or does she have a variety? Uh, Seraphim, well, yeah. Yep, uh, I, I've only seen the Seraphim. Yeah. I, yeah, I think so too. Oh yeah. Oh, Nirvana, uh, Nirvana. staff. That's right. I, I, I thought yep. there was another one. And yeah, not not the most exciting forge, but definitely a good stat stick for Forum. Definitely. Which Seraphim staff, if I remember correctly, has a uh, has a it does have a use effect, I think. I think it casts white. Right. Okay. I think you're right. I think you're right. Yeah. I know it doesn't cast life because that would just be kind of silly. It's like, oh, hey, two, two sticks that do the same exact thing. And Golba's hanging out on the throne. Seems kind of appropriate. Yep. It's uh, tra la 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 Bez. 
At least well, you're just... not going to see him somewhere nastier. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, you know. Plot twist: uh, the king was ruled. The king was mind controlled by a mind controlled mind controller. There we go. Dang. <laughs> I mean, when you think about it, the king was mind controlled by Golbez. Uh, Golbez was mind controlled by Zemus, and Zemus transforms into Zoromus. That sounds exhausting. A little bit. What's more exhausting is how Golbez is able to summon Shadow. Yeah, Shadow knocking out three of your characters uh, sometimes can be pretty bad. Um, again, though, uh, Tybalt's leveled for this. It shouldn't be a big deal. Even, even though... Um, he did end up with just his poor Mintella, but still, I, I have faith. Yep. Uh, which, the irony of, of what's on Tibble's side at the moment is kind of pseudo chuckly because Porum turns to stone, saving the party from something that Golbez pulled. And then Tella just dies trying to avenge his daughter against Golbez. Oh, yeah, that's true. Kind of got a little revenge story here. And then we see on the Mobile side, uh, him going after that Valvalis with a uh, very angry Holy Paladin. Yeah, I don't think Val is going to put up too much of a fight here. Nope, she's just going to um, just going to crumble and uh, move on with life. <laughs> That's <laughs> happened sometimes to the best I of us. Yeah, I was going to make a joke, but uh, I, I lost that train of thought like two seconds in. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so Tybalt gets a paladin um, in Baron here. Very, very lucky. Ooh, fancy. Now, uh, I'm curious to see like what comes out of the trash can. Yeah, we know it can't be anything too exciting. Yeah, uh, okay, what, what do you think? Dragoon armor, white shirt, or glass hat? I was kind of thinking white shirt. Yeah, I'm kind of feeling white shirt or, uh, gla or, uh, Dragoon armor. And it's a rune axe. Rune axe, okay, wow. I think all the bosses that could possibly be, uh, uh weak to that... I think everything's off to see. You're never seeing the rune axe. We're not doing yeah, it. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> uh, anything that would be weak against it is just kind of toast at this point. Yeah. Though, yeah, the voice in our ear did mention Baron Guards. So that that's true. We, oh, we, might, yeah. we might see that. And um, does Tibble have an Avenger? That could be something. Um, yeah. Um, you know, it's hard to say because of the, uh, the right. 20 minute, you know, shift in time the incident oh look uh i saw not one not two but three artemis bows ah, ah, ah. you love to see it well i do anyway <laughs> <laughs> hey look i'm not gonna be opposed to three artemis bows in my inventory just saying now three artemis bows and only one stack of arrows uh that might be a little bit different that's a little frustrating, for sure. Yep. Uh, Moboy then going after uh, uh, Mindhair Rubicant. Uh, like quickly the, resetting. Resetting to kind of finagle his party a little bit. Um, looked like he re-equipped Cecil with something, but I didn't quite catch what that was. Uh, I, uh, I think he was avenging, right? And then, yeah, okay, that must have been it. Yep, because every time you whack Rubicon in the face, he's going to counter with fire. It's not the scariest fire spell, but it certainly adds up here. Yep. Um, I, you know, uh, Rubicon to me has, and, and feel free, chat, anyone who wants to agree with me on this, Rubicon has one of the greatest counter scripts in the game. Uh, and that counter script actually being if you hit Rubicon with a fire spell, he will AoE life your party. It's very true. It's something that uh, has utility. Um, I don't know that I've ever used it, though. <laughs> oh, I... <laughs> in times when I've, I've run seeds and had to shake off the rust, I'm like, I'm going to do this just because 
Uh, I, I done goofed, and I just don't want to spend the time casting life. Why it's cast life when you can have your boss do it? Exactly. <laughs> Flawless logic. Yeah, Crystal Sword and Cecil is definitely doing a lot of damage, but uh, we're seeing a couple party members get knocked out up there. Yeah, because, uh, you know, unfortunately, it, it's uh, while it does a lot of damage, if Rubicon comes and just hits Cecil with a glare at the wrong moment, it's it's lights out. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, nothing too bad happened. Moleboy is through and does have another objective down. Yep. And, uh, well, I mean, the, uh, the objective board is starting to get rather colorful. Yep, we are getting there. Uh, unfortunately, Moleboy does not have the Darkness Crystal yet, so uh, there's not as much open to him at the moment. So he's going to have to do a little Darkness Crystal hunt. Yep. Uh, Luckily, you know, he, you know. has, he has the means, because uh, it's behind Pan, So, but we'll see where he goes next. Yep. Um, yeah, because, I mean, I'm looking at it. It could be Rat Tail, it could be Pan. Oh, I mean, we know it's Pan. Uh, it could be Rat Tail, could be... Actually, that's that's pretty much all he has yeah, left. Yeah, so it I looks. Think. Yeah, he's going for the rat tail turn in first. Oh, uh, well, he's got. Yeah, yeah, that's literally it. Because I think he's uh at what, se almost seventeen and seventeen. Yeah. Yep. Look at that. Yep. Everything but what you need. <laughs> Although I'm curious to see if uh, oh, it's a black shirt. I'm curious to see if he turns into pink tail and what it gives him in return. Decides to just say, you know what? No, I don't. I don't really care. <laughs> and uh, Tibble having a little bit of a struggle with Valvalis over here, but uh, you know, much much like in the wise words of uh, Joe Dirt, he's uh, just keep on keeping on keeping on. Yeah, Val can definitely be somewhat icky, so... Yep. Uh, now, I will say that there is a certain level of, like, strategy going into Val Valis fight. I mean, granted, both of, neither of our runners have, uh, have a cane with them anymore, but there is a certain strategy about it when you go and fight Val Valis, keeping her in that spin form versus jumping her, you know, doing the jump command on her to get her out of it. Because while she's in spin form, she's only going to either punch you, weak, or stone. Uh, when she's not in spin form, that's when things get a little bit more, shall we say, dicey. Yeah, that's very true. So, uh, Moleboy got his darkness crystal and is raising the big well, so. Here we go. And I am, oof, three characters stoned. Will Tibble be able to pull it off with just that, uh, that Cecil who's now at one HP? Can't be stoned. Oh, yeah, there's the reset. Yep. Oof, so close. I think. I wasn't counting. Yeah, it seemed like that one was probably getting there, um... You know, but sometimes those those uh, those fights can really go sour. Mm. And yeah, I just realized uh, Cecil here um, on Tybalt's side is uh, at base level, so oh. yeah, that that uh, is going to make it a little tricky. Agreed. Uh, however, though, we know that at K at K value, those those Baron guards are still there, and they still hurt a lot. That's true, yeah. So Moboy is uh, definitely has a fight uh, ahead of him here. Yeah, I'm curious to see if he's going to do Crystal Sword Avenger, or if he's going to maybe do uh, kind of like cover strats. Yeah, I think it, it is doable. Um, it's just going to be... It's going to take a little luck, a little hard work. <laughs> yep, and... Uh, 
because I mean, you know, having that that split health pool is nice for things like you know, Quake and whatnot. But uh, you know, doing Crystal Sword Avenger kind of leaves you a little uh, unguarded. Right. Absolutely. It's definitely defense versus offense here. Uh, Got to make a choice. Yep. Make a choice and follow through. Ruby is definitely um, given to both the business here a little bit. Yep. The uh, the short end of the stick, as it were. Uh, but I think Mowboy is going to be a little bit... Yeah, he's definitely a lot more uh, leveled, a lot more geared for this fight. Uh, the HP numbers definitely do help. Now, which which one of our runners ended up getting the rune axe? Because I, I was wondering that too. Uh, Rabbis and Chad is pointing out because um, you could rune axe avenge here if you yes. had it, but I can't remember if Moboy had it or not. Um, Moboy did not have it. Dodge. Oh, Tibble. Okay, thank you. Yep. <laughs> it's like which of our runners have it? Half of string fills up. Tibble. Ah, uh, yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what would we do without chat oh you know what uh, chat has a really good point if you take Cecil throw him in the middle slot for that extra 20% accuracy suddenly that Ruinax Avenger is just going to destroy these guards yeah that's a that's a lot of damage that's quad nines right there I think but even without that a uh, little over 5k on each swing Nothing to sneeze at. Not too shabby, and uh, Cecil and Porum could definitely just kind of uh, tandem this themselves. Yep, and we see uh, Tibble playing everyone's favorite game of uh, Life Roulette. And yeah, Moboy is through. That's All right. another objective down. And get a nice uh, Hanzo sword. Can't use it, don't need it, but we love to see the objectives get ticked off. Mm -hmm. So now we're at two objectives uh, to four objectives. However, that I feel like can can change with uh, at the drop of a hat. Absolutely. And yeah, uh, Moboy is doing what I would do here, just going to try and clean out the moon. Yep, uh, it, it's, I mean, it's it's the best approach. Because uh, you don't want to have to go through 65,000 health on top of whatever is sitting at CPU. Yeah, Giant would be uh, definitely, I would be praying for uh, not a nasty Dark Knight Zeusful somewhere down here. But we do know that... Um, First check is just going to be Kaipo guard, so that's going to be a nice surprise. Agreed. Uh, a nice easy fight, nice easy amount of XP. A character named Spring attempts to join the party. Spring, get out of here. We already have Spring. Spring. I don't know, are we in spring right now? Or is this like more of a summer thing? Technically, I think we're, <laughs> we're in spring if we're in the northern hemisphere here, so. That's true. Uh, well, I mean, you say that, uh, but uh, based off this week from what I've seen, it's, it's kind of been just all four seasons across the world. The variety pack. Yep. The, uh, the variety sampler pack. And uh, Tibble just threw that uh, that nasty Rubkin fight. With the with that party at those HP levels, you love to see it. Yeah, it's got to feel pretty good. That that sort of like giant sigh of relief. Yeah, and Cecil's online now too. So that what that was a that was an unleveled <laughs> Cecil. That oh that's uh two. Six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, and oh, but only twenty-four levels though, because that was uh, that was a fight with 
nine key items. That's true. Yeah. So uh, you still do level um, at, at a at a higher rate with ten in this flag set. So yep. nine is not really where you want to be. But any levels on crystal sword, ribbon, crystal vessel is just yeah, yeah. See yeah, good boom. Yes, and that <laughs> yeah, Val shouldn't be uh, too much of an issue at this point now. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, Tibble just going full equip all the things on Cecil. You know, you know you have a winner, just dress him up. <laughs> yep. He, uh... Although, let's, uh... I'm, I'm curious to see, like, what numbers, you know, Pally Cecil in this fight ends up doing now. Yeah, uh, that'd be interesting. With Moboy being through that Murasame altar... That's the Murasame altar? Yeah, that's the oh, Murasame. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have to reverse my ABCs on this one. Right. But yeah, so Bullboy has one more to do. It's going to be that uh, Masamune altar down below. Um, we still haven't seen, um, as Barabas points out, uh, DKC. That, that could be a very nasty surprise down there. You know, I I haven't looked at my uh, my DKC chart in a while. I don't know how much he hits there, but I imagine it's for quite a bit. An amount that would make anyone cry, like a truck. Yes. <laughs> uh, let's see. I don't know. I have a uh, I have the DKC damage chart somewhere, but if someone's able to pull it up quicker than I can, uh, it just says no. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I've got Dark Elf, D Lunar, D Mist. Uh, Let's see, where is, oh, uh, mirror Cecil slot, well, that's all the, 2k plus a wave, oh boy. That's enough. Yeah. But yeah, getting that uh, last save in, we will see who potentially the last boss uh, will be for Moleboy here in a second. Uh, Alt Gauntlet is also nasty here. That has not been seen either. Mm -hmm. uh, and oh. Tibble is through the Val. Huzzah! Tibble, yeah. Um... Oh man, this is so tense here. I know, right? Like... <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. Um... Wyvern. Ooh, yeah. uh, what's, what's the opening? Uh, that Powder. is a... Powder? So, oh, wow. it's a it's lime status. That's interesting. I haven't seen that one. Uh, Cecil did not get it. Um, yeah, that is an interesting one. Yep, uh... Yeah, uh, so powder is actually used by, oh, I want to say, uh, the, the, their flower-looking enemies. Right, uh, yeah. In the underworld. And does this status affect, this just, does this affect your accuracy, or I'm not even, I don't even really see it all that often, so. Yeah, uh, so blind will reduce your accuracy. Uh, well, powder will cast uh, blind on everyone. The reason why it didn't hit Cecil is because he's either got a ribbon hat on he or the ribbon, yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. Yeah, I think I think it, it's the ribbon. But the uh, the nukes will still fly and they will still hurt. Yep, this is Normally. definitely as as uh, much as we would have liked to see this uh, witch burn over some others, this is still gonna be a little tricky. Uh let's see, so that might take out the tell yeah that takes out the tele. And uh 
those fortunate enough to be wearing crystal rings uh, will just kind of laugh at Wyvern's nukes. Oh, that's uh, true. Yeah, and while we're on the topic of just you know witch burns that pop out, uh, what's uh, what's been your either your favorite or just your most terrifying experience with witch burn? Uh, favorite is um, got to be retreat. I was like, oh, of course. Oh, <laughs> um, I think the worst I've ever had um, was probably tornado. Ooh, tornado is pretty rough. And we see Moboy. Uh, GG's to Moboy. G that is all G's six. Moboy um, is the Rue. Wow, very, very well run. The Wyvern was nothing. Oh, what, what Wyvern? What are you talking about? Exactly. And with the ding in my ear, I believe we are joined by a random Moboy. Moboy, GG's. Well played, Moboy. How are you feeling right now? Uh, I'm a little bit surprised. Uh, I had kept expecting the dot done from Tipple to come in based on the fact that I 16 out of 17. Yeah, it was a it was a very, very interesting seed. Um, did you feel like you were behind during it or? I didn't necessarily feel that I was behind because I didn't really get walled anywhere. Um, I thought my execution was at least all right for most of it. So I wasn't really dealing with um, you know, feeling like I was getting, you know, really walled anywhere. I mean, the running into the package having not saved wasn't, you know, necessarily my greatest moment I'll ever have. But, you know, giving up like a minute was, you know, again, survivable, even if it didn't feel great. But, uh, yeah, no, I thought overall it was a, a pretty solid run. Thanks. Uh, how did you feel going in so i think it was somewhere around the 45 minute mark and it's just like there's no objectives you've got no key items uh leading to any of the objectives like you know was that kind of a oh, this is going to be a long seed this is going to be just like did that change your routing or uh sort of mindset into how you were going to approach things uh well i will say i had my heart set on just fading ordeals uh, and then the seed said no. So uh, that was definitely interesting. But uh, no, I mean, at 45 minutes, I I mean, I made it under, I think I was underground, like in the tw like somewhere in the 20s. I uh, had cleared at least a couple of things by like the 30, 35 minute mark. So I was feeling pretty good. It started getting a little windy, but there's, you know, only so much you can do. Uh, the routing ended up working out just because Fey March had tower keys. So that kind of led in there and then Tower key led into hook, or tower key led me, you know, into tower, which gave me hook, um, and enough pieces to kind of, you know, make me feel like I was at least gaining. Um, it was more towards the end when I, what, like, I basically last location darkness crystal, and then went went up to the moon and was like, well, hopefully I don't get majorly walled. It wasn't going to be terrible if DKC was at Masa, just because I could have exited out and there were literally two spots to check for the Baron key and then I could have gone that way but no all in all I, I think I ran it pretty well agreed and yeah, um, I uh, I feel you there on the last locationing of the darkness crystal the because uh, I was gonna say like so how about that uh, hard required twin harp yeah that was uh, I mean at basically with everything I ran it I mean it worked out with how I routed because I had 10 key items before I did backside to sylph and there were six of the trap just there aside from the centipede so uh by the time I hit that that's why I basically went forged and then went to to fey marches you know I've got a high level cecil with an avenger and a crystal sword it's time to just let it go yeah, yeah. speaking of ordeals and you know cecil it's like I uh <laughs> So how about instead of one Cecil, we give you three Cecils and 4,700 crystal swords to go with them. Yeah, and I missed where where is the uh, the third Cecil? Because I saw the one in Earth and I saw the one. I'm just spacing on where the third one was. Uh, it was in Baron Castle. Oh, gotcha. OK, yeah, yeah. so I didn't do that. But I did uh, the one on Zod and the one on um, the one in uh, Evelyn Cave. And I was figuring seeing both of those, I was just like, oof, like, this means that I probably don't have a Cecil advantage, but it looks like I probably did that. 
Yeah, unlike many of these runs, uh, Lucy definitely wanted you to have the sea soul song. <laughs> yeah, and then of course I managed to completely forget where the Avengers were, so checked two extra shops, which also didn't feel great. Yeah, I mean, on the whole, though, uh, you you ran it really confidently. You seemed, you know, you seemed like you were on a good pace. Um, yeah. Do you, uh, do you think that, so based off of how you ran this particular seat, uh, I know that you said that you ran it pretty well. Is there anything that you maybe would have changed or done a little bit differently? Oh, tons of things. I mean, like... But you make the choices you have at the time based on what you've got, and, uh, you know, some of them pan out, some of them don't, so any number of the things I did were... could have been extremely big brain if they'd paid out, but, uh, no, instead we lost location, but it, you know, worked out in the end. Yep, and, um, you know, and, and we see that, uh, that took you to first place on Restream here, uh, with, uh, I see, 1 hour, 47 minutes, and 28 seconds. Which I will definitely take for a near full <laughs> Yeah, uh, that is highly impressive with this flag set. Um, the, uh, especially the party that was kind of given. It was kind of just, I, I feel like mostly uh, reject percent with uh, one, you know, shiny stick. I mean, I don't think it was necessarily that because you had multiple characters who were able to use an Arbor spell. Um, so you've got a lot of agility manipulation options. Really what what made it a little bit more interesting, especially in the you know early game, is just no Stardust Rods or Charm Rods. Like the best I found for Palom was just that Mute Knife for Wisdom Gear, um, which really limits your ability to easily clear the overworld. So that's why I spent most of my money on um, Artemis Arrows, is just because I didn't know how long it was going to take to basically form to shoot your way through everything. And then as soon as I was through Baron in, just giving it to Sid, because he's a much better receptacle for that. But yeah, um, I mean, it worked out that the one piece of body armor, I think, really, that, that paid off dividends, actually, was the crystal armor that I never sold for Cecil. Um, that's what made, you know, he never got powdered. Um, he also didn't get sized by the Baron guards. And uh, that definitely helped me get through those fights. Right, yeah, we were wondering exactly what it was that uh, you were wearing for those. So yeah, that's pre that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's uh, definitely uh, locked out with the uh, the witchburn being powder, because uh, you know, like for having things such as ribbon or the crystal ring, or uh, in your case, the crystal armor, uh, to not go ahead and be status affected, uh, it definitely paid off. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, and as you saw in the fight, I reflexively threw the Star Veil when I saw Wither Wyvern, which um, in Witchburn, not necessarily what you need to do, but uh, here we are. It worked out. <laughs> Old habits die hard, for sure. Well, oh. I, I think that was really well run. Uh, do, you, do you have any final thoughts, my boy? Uh, no major thoughts, but I just want to thank you, uh, you know, you two for doing comms, uh, Harumph on Sorry, Hush Pyramid on Restream, um, tra everybody who's tracking, and also, um, you know, Tibbled. He's a heck of a runner. I did not go in with a, a huge amount of confidence on this one, just knowing that when, uh, on his day, Tibble can beat nearly anybody, and, you know, it just happened to work out. So thank you all so much. Yeah, you know, as the saying goes, RNG, just gonna RNG. And, you know, we, uh, we couldn't have had as high of a level of entertainment and, you know, appreciation for the seed and this flag set uh if it's if it wasn't for you two so thank you very much for for running what you did and uh you know we, we look forward to seeing what you do here in the future oh thank you so much thank you good ggs ggs All right, that was Moleboy, and uh, meanwhile, Tybalt uh, is through the giant and is tackling uh, Cave Bahamut. Yep, and uh, as uh, Barabas points out in chat, he is, uh, Tybalt is doing the uh, center slot rune axe with uh, Cecil here, and uh, much like we were talking about earlier, doing that center slot rune axe Avenger with Cecil, 
Uh, that that actually makes sense a lot uh, as to whoa. Uh, I I might want to stop talking before Tibble just gets uh, uh, all of his characters punched to La La Land. Although never mind. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> never mind. I'm just uh uh. <laughs> yeah, Cecil I, taking that one. Yeah, I think I think this is gonna be okay. The Stargale was um was a good move. Uh, we're gonna see some damage come out. I think here. Yep. Um, yeah, just having that star veil, um, you know, just in, in case of like size or mute. Well, actually, mute wouldn't do anything to Tyler Cecil, but uh, the size definitely would affect his, his ability to uh, hurt things. Yeah, size would be pretty nasty, but it is getting, uh, getting blocked there, as you can see. Yep, and uh, the Punch Mage. Thinking that he can still punch things. And it's everyone is going. Stuff. Yep. You know, uh, uh, Yang uh, sized laying on the ground still looks like a purple frog. You know, he does. He kind of blends in with the, with the uh, background to me, too. Yep. And with that, I think that's going to be one more swing on uh, the guard, and that'll be it for the Baron Guards. Yep. So Tibble getting his Hanzo sword, uh, and getting his sixth objective as well. That is it, yeah, GG's to Tibble. GG's to Tibble. Uh, a, a, yeah. And see if uh, we can get him in here for an interview. There he is. GG's Tibble. How are you feeling? <laughs> I'm mad at myself. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, I, I distinctly remember saving so much. And I could have sworn I saved. So when, when I wiped the hair dryers, I saw I was a dwarf. I took a second look thinking, maybe I loaded the wrong save. Nope. It was oh, 20 minutes we... down the drain. <laughs> We all felt the pain physically, and we've all been there, um, you know, and everybody in chat, we were all saying um, how awesome it was that you kept going after that, because it, it's it's definitely like a rough break, for sure, oh, but I mean, you kept going. So, one of the main reasons why I ended up kept going is because of where darkness was. I know a lot of people don't like doing twin harp so when twin harp gave the pan and the pan turned into darkness i'm like hey cool i might be able to make up time maybe hopefully it means i don't get a guaranteed cecil anymore because i'm not doing zod again for a crystal ring i'm not doing dwarf unless i have to to get the cane like <laughs> Yeah, honestly, um, you you played that very well afterwards because, uh, and we commented on it, um, you know, you were playing it efficiently because you already had some information. So, you know, well done on that. But I'll go through, like, I, I need either Kane or Cecil to get through the Ruby because Ruby is a, is a nightmare. And I hadn't found any, any, I found a Blizzard Spear, finally, from, Bar from Baron, which I was like, cool, I've got an option for Kane for Ruby. They're like, cool, I got cane, but no ice brand, no blizzard spear, whatever. Maybe I can fade that one. Well, no, I faded the Masa because I was hoping to find Forge, which, you know, never found. But I still knew what the Legend Sword was. Just want to let you know that it was in the seed. <laughs> in a spot you didn't check. Just, just, <laughs> okay, just let you know. Oh. Uh, so, so, um, uh, what I, one of the. I mean, there was a lot going on in this race. Uh, you know, much like I asked Moboy, uh, 45 minutes into the into the scene, and it's like there's there's no objectives done, there's no uh, key items that led to objectives being done. Being that far into the seed at that point, like even around the hour mark, just before the hair dryers, like pr prior to the uh, twin heart to pan to darkness, uh, was that kind of concerning for you or? Was a little bit concerning, but I mean, you, you take a look at least 
Well, we had the early game. We, you know, we had Reject. We had Forum, Palum, great team up for a little bit there. We had Sid, Tella, and that was pretty much the party we had until we did Dwarf, which is not entirely a bad party, but we just had no real defensive gear besides crystal rings and glass hats. We had no other stat boosts, no no heroin rope, no black belt, which I was hoping for eventually. Uh, but I mean, once, once you got through Dwarf, because there's no way you're doing that early Fae March with Val and, and Ruby sitting down there. No, that's no. <laughs> so you might be inclined to do Sylph, which is a little tricky with the trap chest down there. You probably haven't pour them fast enough to be able to get the mute bells off, but... Even then, like, you kind of got to roll up the party that you have, and not having major, you know, stat boosts and get to get through fights a little bit faster, you're kind of being picky on where you want to go. But, you know, which is why I did, I did the Warriors to get Warp on Pelham. Forgetting I had Warp with Tella. I thought about that afterwards. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, we, I, you uh, know, yeah, we talked about that too, because we were talking all about how you needed, you know, Pelham and and then we we're like, oh wait, but there's Tella, so. <laughs> they completely, completely wrote off Tella, because I'm like, oh, maybe I won't keep Tella if there's a cave. I'm like, no, I'll just get rid of Sid. I'll keep the cane, keep the Tella for an extra blink caster. Like, he'll, he'll come in handy sometime, hopefully. Poor Tella, hardest working man in free enterprise. Mm hmm. Yep. Which, which which is why you know, at the end I decided to do the hair dryer's chest and the last arm, hopefully looking to spike, you know, the adamant rock. Right. To hopefully fade a second objective, you know, fade either uh, the giant at that point, because that's the one I would have faded next, because I'm not walking all the way down to Masa Altar. I'm like, I, I'd rather just do the giant, unless it's DKC, you know, in either spot, you know. <laughs> yeah, which, uh, uh, I think you, you might have had some fun at uh, the Masa altar, had you gone there. What was there? Wyvern. Oh, that would have been free. That would have been so free. With yeah, the, uh, 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 powder. I was going to say pollen, but it was powder. It was the witch fern. I'm not too familiar with what powder does. It, it does blind status. Yeah, it's weird. It's a weird one. I've never seen it. Yeah, uh, you know, it real, real, just shrug it off and poof, you're done. Like, yeah, yeah. free. But, uh, you know, we. I mean, I would have seen that. I would have put the an Artemis bow, Artemis arrow on Cecil and then done an Avenger glitch to stick an Artemis bow and Artemis arrow on somebody else, you know? <laughs> yep, and. Uh, what, three people shooting at him. We saw you towards the end there doing the uh, Runax, Starville, Avenger, Cecil. Uh, very much, you know, the the clapping, the applause, like, well done. Like, it's like, oh, they're our guards. Uh, they're mages. Let's go ahead and just take them down big time. Right. I mean, your Runex has, has really bad accuracy, so that's the reason why I stuck in the center slot. And again, not having any, you know, strength boosting gear besides the Crystal Sword or Avenger, I wanted to hit a weakness. And not having a Zeus Gauntlet led me to use the Star Veil to prevent against the size. Great. Yep. Yeah, that was smart. Um, uh, <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, just I, I mean, I was feeling pretty good until the reset. And uh -huh. like, yeah, it's ugh, there's just nothing you could say. It's just it's it's just rough. You know, uh, well, I mean, this, so we're we're just not gonna have you run uh, do a campfire seed with me the night before, because uh, I have a bad habit of doing that, like not healing before a boss or not saving as much as I need to. I distinctly remember saving because I was saving a ton in the early game. Like I check a boss reset, and I was just saving constantly. I well, know. you ha you have a bot, so, you know you can go back and check it out uh, later on. Yeah, yeah. I just, just gotta make me remember saving, but I guess I didn't. Well, you know, it, it those rabbit holes get you hyper focused, and um, you know when, when you're going, you're going, you're going. Like I'm going to do the thing. I'm make I'm like making up so much time and to be fair in all fairness so uh, you know as we pointed out earlier not only did you keep going but you actually looking at the time like you made up 10 minutes of time out of the i think roughly 20 minutes that were that was lost which is yeah. supremely impressive 
hugely impressive for sure like you you took that and, and you did the best you could with it I like that was optimal because uh, it's like I'm not I'll do the minimum I need to get you know darkness and and all that and you know pray that I get you know Cecil or Kane on the moon nope get you know fine I'll take him I don't remember what Ice Claw is but I'll take him I don't care <laughs> it's still gonna whack away at everything and make it go boom ah <sighs> Well, Tybalt, he, um, uh, any, any additional thoughts? Any, uh, you gonna be all right there? <laughs> I'll be fine. <laughs> I'm just, Aww. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just like right now the dog with the, you know, that, that's got the fire going around. Like, I'm fine. Yeah. Totally yeah, fine. Totally. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, Tybalt, uh, like, like, like it's been mentioned to Bull Boy, you know, we, uh, and as, you know, Flossie and I both know, uh, as well as all of chat knows, you are a man of the people. You know, you you toughed it through. You showed them what's what, and you you stuck it through. Uh, and that's we we had one heck of a race uh, in entertainment value because you stuck it through. Okay, well, let, 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 let's just say this one about my like, tournament legacy. Okay, one y'all had a charm claw, hooray! It still continues on. Uh -huh. And then a wipe cost me twenty minutes, and I lose. Like it's just that—that's my tournament legacy. Cool. <laughs> no, no, that, your your legacy <laughs> is only a legacy if this is where you stop. But I'm not going to. Exactly. Go. That's the spirit. That's the ticket. All right, Tibble. Any uh, any final thoughts? No. Nope. Or, or things you want to tell the uh, the people? I don't know. Thanks for doing the reshoot of the comms. I always enjoy watching these back, and uh, always make sure that you you double save, triple save, save as many times as you need to, <laughs> or or heal before a trap chest. This is true. All fair advice. <laughs> yep. Uh, All right, Zebo. So, well, we appreciate you, man. Uh, thank thank you for being here. Not a problem. Have a good one, all. <laughs> you too. GG, Zebo. GGs. All right. Uh, wow. What a race. What a, um, excuse me while I collect my vocabulary. I know, I know, right? <laughs> uh, Flossie, are we, are we done? Uh, Flossie Fern? Uh, so, yeah, I mean, we, we have a big day tomorrow. Um, let's see here. At 11 Eastern, um, Elvin Sorrow is going to race peasants on Randomania. Um, Looks like at 2 Eastern, uh, Professor Renderer versus uh, Boney on Free Enterprise. And we have a twin cast going um, at 8 Eastern, and that's going to be Bangagong versus Vatasia um, and Twisted Flax versus Night Dew. And to round it off, um, we have uh, Blaze versus Martin at 10 Eastern. So if you like Free Enterprise, tomorrow's your night. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and it's uh, it, you know, to go ahead and kind of additionally showcase. So the race between Elven Sorrow and Peasants OMFG uh, will be on the Randomania channel. Uh, the race between Professor Renderer and Boney will be on this particular channel, the Free Enterprise. Uh, the Twin Cast will be on the Free Enterprise channel, and then the uh, Blaze versus Martin Broadcloak is going to be on the Free Enterprise Two. That's Free Enterprise the number two channel uh all of this is going to be on the discord so if you are not on the discord definitely come on over say hi say what's up uh lots of friendly people this is a huge community tons of help lots of great people um you know and, and you know every variety of runners from just playing it casually to seasoned veterans uh, all kinds of people to be on here um with that, uh, I think we're we are actually going to go ahead and raid on over to Chuck Ultra, uh, who is playing the Moonveil Mixer. Now, for those of you who are unaware of, you know, when, when whenever we raid, uh, please don't provide any spoilers. There are some people who haven't been able to check this out, uh, so go ahead and go over there, show your support. Um, next week starts the Moonveil Mixer seed, so it's going to be a whole new, different type of flag set. Uh, which you'll get to go ahead and preview in this in this raid that we do. So with that, I am the Blue Wizard. This is Flossy Fern. We bid you adieu and have a good night. Thank you, everybody.